Welcome to the sixth lecture on water management uh, learning from the Israeli experience. Our lecturer today is Mr. Chazi Bilik, former chief engineer of the urban wastewater sector, Israel Water Authority. The subject this time is um, water loss uh, production in urban water supply networks. Before we start, a few technical and logistics uh, from your, uh, with your permission. We will do our best to finish around the end of the hour. Maybe we'll still a few more minutes if you have lots of questions. Questions, please uh, write them down at the chat option to everyone. Mr. Billick will leave time for answers before the end of his lecture. The lecture is recorded and will be up uploaded uh, to YouTube. In addition, it is also on Facebook Live. You are more than welcome to share it. Future lectures will take place uh, every Tuesday and will deal with uh, disruption and sustainable water, uh, disruption and sustainable water technologies by Professor Hadass uh, Maman will take place next week at the same day at the same time. Afterwards, we'll have water purification, reclamation, quality control, desalination, urban water management, and we will close the sessions with a very interesting uh, lecture regarding innovation, Israeli innovation in the water sector. This will take place at the last week of August. Uh, let's see. Yeah. For those, for those of you that know little about uh, the body I work for, namely a mashav, now it's time for you to spend 100 seconds for a short uh, video. Chazi, you can take it from there. Wishing us all an interesting and useful hour. Thank you. Alina? Yes, just a second. The Thank song you. Preparing. Uh, Hezi, take into consideration, please, that you are muted. Okay, so at the end of the movie, you can un unmute your microphone. Mashav, Israel's Agency for International Development Cooperation, was launched 60 years ago to share the know-how and technologies which provided the basis for Israel's own rapid development. Mashav aims to empower those living in poverty in a holistic and innovative way and support fellow nations and communities in their struggle to achieve sustainable development, placing people at the heart of its initiatives. Our agricultural programs use unique techniques and farming methods to increase sustainability, food security, and hunger eradication. We believe that investment in education is an investment in our future and an agent for change around the world. We coordinate Israel's official humanitarian assistance, building medical facilities and supplying medicine in the wake of earthquakes, floods, famine, and other disasters. Mashav promotes innovative entrepreneurship as a means of advancing growth and prosperity. We believe that gender equality and women's empowerment are central to reach sustainable development. Our philosophy is to leave no one behind. During six decades, Mashav has trained over 300,000 people from more than 140 countries and has established development projects worldwide. Mashav. Israel's Agency for International Development Cooperation is celebrating 60 years of sharing its experience and partnering for a better world. Chazik, the floor is yours. We cannot hear you, Chaz. If, uh, if you started talking, we cannot hear you. Uh, 
now you hear me it's great you can you hear me now yes we hear you yes yes okay so good morning uh, our uh, colleagues from south america there are many of them and from north america good evening uh, the audiences from uh, asia and good afternoon to all the audiences from uh, Africa, there are many of them, especially from Kenya and from Europe, uh, from Europe. and uh, a special congratulations to our colleagues from France who celebrate today the Bastille Day. I wish to thank uh, Yoram Moad for the opportunity to uh, have this uh, presentation. And also, I want, wish to uh, thank Alina Donchik and Ora Rabin for the technical assistance. My name is Hezi Bilik. I worked for about 25 years for the Israel Water Authority, 20 of them in the uh, urban sector, and seven of these 20 as the chief engineer of the urban sector, and then there, I dealt a lot with non-revenue water or water loss reduction. Uh, we'll speak today, I, I will start with a short uh, worldwide review. Then we'll speak about water balance in water supply networks. We'll speak about ways to reduce non-revenue water rates, uh, some methods for estimating the water loss, and I will present some uh, new technologies that help us to uh, reduce the water loss. There is a new report of uh, IWA. Uh, it's it issued uh, exactly two years ago, and it's quantifying, uh, quantifying the non-revenue water uh, problem. And it's written there that the global volume of non-revenue water has been estimated to be 346 million cubic meters per day, or 126 billion cubic meters per year. And it's also uh, written there that conservatively valued at only 0.31 US dollar per cubic meter, the cost or the value of water lost amounts to 39 billion cubic dollar per year. So this point uh, 31 uh, US dollar as a tariff per cubic meter is really very conservative because the tariff in Israel is more than three times uh, this, uh, this amount. And also the average non-revenue water across the world is 30% of the system input volume. Uh, <clears throat> there is a chart in this uh, report of International Water Association that uh, uh, describes the big difference among countries and areas in the world in the non-revenue water rates. Another source of uh, information is from Wikipedia. And as we see here, in Singapore, Denmark, Netherlands, Germany, and Japan, the non-revenue water rates were uh, 5 to 7 percent, which is very low. And of course, there are many other cities and countries with much higher numbers. But what I want to emphasize here is, uh, for example, uh, this data that in Eastern Manila, Manila the water rate, the non -wat the non-revenue water rates uh, was 63% in 1997, and they succeeded in 14 years to reduce it to 11%, which is a big, big reduction. And in West Jakarta, for example, uh, they reduced it in uh, 13 years from 57 to 90 uh, to 39 percent. So it, it's possible, and uh, with uh, uh, right effort, it can be done. 
Uh, from these reports, the evidences and conclusions are that the non-revenue water rates problem is huge, the water loss amount is enormous, the economic damage is great, and there is a big regional difference in non-revenue water rates. Uh, it's also obvious that the non-revenue water rate is never close to zero. No, uh, Singapore is only 5%, but it's uh, not zero, we can reach uh, zero. So there is a lot to do, and it is possible. It is in, how, in our hands. So what are the benefits from the water loss reduction? It's uh, obvious, but let's uh, repeat uh, uh, these uh, benefits. First, it uh, reduces the operation, <coughs> the operating uh, cost. It increases the revenues of the utility. It improves water, water resources efficiency and extend water supply at lowest costs. <coughs> So water loss reduction is the cheapest water source we have since we uh, produce the water, we pump the water, uh, we treat the water and the water are in our system. So we have to take care not to lose uh, this water. Uh, water balance, <coughs> water balance, uh, it's based, this chart based on uh, uh, it's issued by water loss uh, specialist group of IWA. At the right side, we see the system, it, this uh, rectangular describes the system input, uh, the meter input that the network, that the, uh, to the network that the utility or corporation pays for. On the other side, we see the revenue water and the non-revenue water, which is the same size. The input uh, volume is divided in the in divided into authorized consumption and water losses, while the authorized consumption is divided into build authorized consumption and unbuild authorized consumption. And we see that the build authorized consumption equal exactly to revenue water. So we know now what is revenue water, it's the build uh, consumption, and the non-revenue water is all the rest. The build authorized consumption is divided into build meter uh, consumption and build unmeter consumption, like bills that are sent according to estimation. And the unbuild, but still authorized consumption, uh, consumption is divided into unbuilt metered consumption like supply to churches, to synagogues, to mosques. Uh, it's metered but uh, the utility do, do not uh, send bills uh, for them and there are the unbuilt and unmetered consumption uh, by the fire, uh, fire department, uh, consumption for cleaning the pipes and pools, and so on. All these are authorized, but part of the non-revenue water. The water losses are divided into unaccounted for and real losses. And the unaccounted for are divided into unauthorized consumption, like mostly the thefts or the Ill illegal uh, connections that uh, people uh, connect to connect themselves to the network and the inaccuracy in metering uh, consumption that the meters are not meter. And the real losses are divided into uh, leaks from mains. Uh, part of them are apparent and a part of them are hidden. Leaks from connections and reservoir uh, spillage. Uh, what I want to emphasize about revenue water, that this is the build uh, amount. It's not, it's not includes the depreciation of the collection by the, by the utility, only the build uh, amount. So let's put uh, this uh, 
uh, rectangulars into proportion. Uh, this revenue water in Singapore is 95%, and in other city it uh, can uh, goes from uh, 90 even down to 40%. And the non-revenue water in Singapore is only 5%, and in other cities 10 to uh, 60%. In Israel, the numbers are 90% for revenue water and 10% for non-revenue water. Now about the unaccounted for and the real losses, we don't, know, uh, we don't know how much is the unaccounted for and how much is the real losses. The unaccounted for are the build unmeter consumption like fire department and so on, all these uh, components. Uh, Probably it's 50% and 50%, it depends on the utility. It can be also 90% of thefts and inaccuracy and only 10% five loss, uh, real losses. Uh, it depends on the utility and we don't know uh, the division between these uh, amounts. Another thing that I want to say here is the difference between lo water losses and non-revenue water. The um, professional term is non-revenue water and it's, include, it, it's clear, it's include all these components that we see in the rectangular of the non-revenue water. <clears throat> and the water loss, there are experts that say that uh, water loss is equal exactly to non-revenue -re water. And others say that the water loss is not included, for example, the unbuilt uh, method consumption and part of the unbuilt uh, meter, the unbuilt unmetered consumption like the fire con uh, department. There is amount that we cannot reduce. So water loss and non-revenue water are almost the same and you have to decide about each term. Uh, the formula of uh, non-revenue water is the input volume minus the build meter consumption divided by input volume. And it is recommended to try to estimate each component, especially these unaccounted for and real losses that are different from utility to utility, and then reduce the significant com components and it's also recommended to create a unified, unified terminology for the various components of the non-revenue water or water loss. So how we can reduce the water losses? There is uh, this famous uh, charge of uh, IWA, and we see in the center this uh, gray square, uh, which presents the total non-revenue non water or water losses and the dotted square that was present the unavoidable real loss. You see here unavoidable real loss, uh, probably in Singapore it's 5%. So we don't know the, the size of the unavoidable uh, real loss, it can be 5%, it can be 3% or 8 we don't know uh, its dimension, but it, uh, it exists. Now, how we can squeeze the gray, uh, the gray square in order to reach almost the dimension of the dotted square? Uh, one way is by speed and quality of repairs. Another way is active leakage control. This, the third is pressure management, and the fourth is pipe and asset management. And let me add another arrow to squeeze the gray square, uh, and it is the improvement of accuracy and frequency of measurements. Uh, as I told you, the, this is the unavoidable real loss is a theoretical uh, amount and there is also economic amount of water loss. Uh, we have to reduce or to squeeze this the uh, gray square but not up to the dimension 
of unavoidable real loss, it's, it's because it's not economic to uh, look for any drop that go out from the from the system. What is ILI? ILI is infrastru infrastructure leakage index, and it is the ratio between the large, the gray square, and the small, the dotted dotted uh, square. Uh, so if your ILI is one, it's excellent. You have reached the unavoidable loss dimension. If it's two to four, it's uh, quite good. But if your ILI is above four, there is a lot to improve. Now let's speak about method of estimating the water loss water losses. The first one is percentage. It, it is the most uh, popular method uh, and you saw uh, the IWA uses it and the Wikipedia uses it because it has some main advantages. It is easy to understand, it is easy to calculate and it is easy to compare to other periods or other years and to other utilities or countries. But there are also some disadvantages of this method. It depends on the total consumption that can be different from uh, period to period. And it's not include any volume of water, it's just a relative number. Uh, another method of estimating is ILI, as I have just uh, mentioned now. And there are quantity methods like loss in cubic meter or liter per service connection or losses in cubic meter or liter per kilometer of pipeline or liter per capita per day which is also easy to calculate and easy to compare. So it's recommended to examine the various methods used in the world and determine uh, which method or more than one methods are the best applied uh, to your uh, utility. So let's go into uh, details if for these four or five arrows of squeezing the gray, uh, the gray square. The first one is speed and quality of repairs. Uh, I speak here usually about apparent burst and the, the utility must have professional, equipped and committed maintenance team with backup by determined uh, management and it's also uh, very good to have accessible spare parts store with uh, adequate stock. Uh, another, uh, another thing that can be help, uh, helpful is high public awareness since the uh, utility staff is not uh, presenting all the time all over the network. So with how public awareness uh, the people can, the people tend to inform about leakage, leakages and, uh, and burst which is very important for speed and uh, quanti uh, quality of the repairs. And it's obvious that the fastest the repair, the lowest the water loss. Let's compare apparent losses, apparent uh, burst versus idle, uh, hidden uh, leakage. If there is a big burst of 100 cubic meter per hour, and it's last two hours for the utility to shut down the taps, uh, the water loss is uh, 200 cubic meter. But if there is a small hidden leak of 100 liter per hour, which is uh, 1000 times smaller than the burst, but if, if it lasts uh, one year, uh, the amount of water loss is four times, uh, four times uh, higher. So usually water losses from hidden leaks uh, is, are much higher than water losses from bursts. Let's go to 
active leakage control. Uh, usually it's related for hidden leakage and there are periodic technologies to cope with and permanent technologies to reveal the hidden uh, leakage, leakages. One of the, of the periodic, we start with the periodic, the first is a long, a long pipe uh, technology, mainly it's based on acoustic sensor. You see here the technicians with these sensors, it goes along uh, the place where there is a buried uh, pipe and if there is a noise of uh, leakage, uh, he can hear it uh, in his earrings. Uh, there are also portable devices uh, in, in a portable in, uh, application in portable uh, telephones. So the main advantages of these portable uh, devices is that they pinpoint the leakages exactly, they come exactly to their point, but the disadvantage uh, that uh, this reveal of uh, detect of uh, leakage right only to the check moment and to survey the all uh, networks is uh, quite expensive and takes a long time. Another periodic detection uh, method is made by satellite. Uh, the satellites uh, detect humidity of soil uh, with drinking water characteristics. The big advantage is that it gives a whole picture, a whole uh, network picture in one shot. Or here you see uh, two shots of the same satellite in the same flight that gives information about leakages uh, of all these uh, mega city of uh, Bangkok. And another adventure that it gives suspected leakage areas in radius of 50. Uh, to 80 meters, you see here the dots, dots and it's dots, uh, it's a point of interest that are suspected to have uh, leakage in the network. Uh, but the disadvantage again, it's right only for the moment of the shot. And uh, another uh, pinpoint detection is still uh, needed with a portable device but only in very uh, small area. So the process is that at the beginning we are absolutely blind. We don't know what, what's going underground with our network. And then we get, after the, the shot of the satellites, we get this uh, information of uh, uh, suspected dots. And then we have to make the final tuning of the leakage uh, uh, detection. Another leak detection uh, periodical is periodic is by helium. Uh, we can penetrate helium to the pipe uh, from balloon and detect the helium that evaporates through the hole. Uh, usually it's uh, quite expensive and we use it only in very difficult uh, cases, deep uh, deep uh, pipes that uh, cannot give the noise of, uh, of leakage. Now after the periodic we are going to permanent technology, uh, most of them also based on acoustic sensor. We see here uh, in hydrant with this box tightened to the hydrant. Uh, this box uh, contains uh, acoustic sensor and means of transportation usually seem to uh, to transfer the information. And this is the installation of these uh, boxes, uh, these uh, acoustic boxes uh, in the network of Jerusalem. You see uh, many of them. So every night at two o'clock in the morning with, when it is relatively silent around, and no, with no uh, background noise, all these uh, sensors are, are waking up uh, simultaneously and listen to leakages. So how it works? We see here, we see here sensor A 
and sensor B, and they listen to the, the leakage and also determine the distance of the leakage from the sensor. Here you see a long distance and the short distance. Uh, the maximum distance between the two sensors is up to 500 meters. And when they detect uh, a leakage, they transfer the information through the cellular and then uh, to, through the cloud uh, to the control center of the, uh, of the utility. And uh, when the staff uh, comes in the morning, here's the report uh, in a table shape and in a map where there are uh, new leakages that were detected uh, during the night. The, the big advantage is that it pinpoints the leakage in accuracy of seven to eight meter, which is very accurate. Uh, probably we have to uh, make a fine tuning with this portable device and it detects leakage on a daily basis, on a daily basis. It's also give priorities to leakages or to repair because it can uh, 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 distinguish between a high and medium and small leakages according to the power of the noise. The disadvantage is that it's uh, quite expensive when we have to cover all our networks, but on the other end, we can uh, cover only part of the network and uh, it, it is given to transfer to another section after, let's say, some months, a half a year, to another section of the network. Another permanent uh, tool or uh, technology is management tools. It is holistic tracing software that getting online data from various control tools uh, from the network like SCADA and from sensors like flow meters, pressure gauges, and so on. And it analyzes it, uh, this data by sophisticated algorithm, uh, algorithm and submits uh, operational recommendation. Part of them are about uh, suspected uh, leakage areas. It gives notici notification of this uh, suspected leakage on a DMA area, district metering, uh, uh, district metering areas uh, basis. And I will uh, say some words about district metering area. Uh, we can divide our uh, network, especially big networks into sections in order to better detect the leakages. For example, you see here an um, uh, area with two main, one or two main meters and this apartment uh, meters. So it's a worldwide practice to divide the municipal water supply network into smaller sections for better locating and controlling water losses. We see here uh, an example. This is one uh, DMA, this is another DMA. And if there is detection of leakage, we don't have to go to all the network and we can detect or try to find the, the leakage only in this smaller area. The third arrow is pressure management. Uh, and it's also obvious that low, the lower the pressure, the lower the water losses. And what lower pressure reduce also the water consumption, which is also uh, good for the utility and uh, for the, uh, our resources. By the way, the maximum pressure allowed in urban networks in Israel is five bar. So how it's done? It's done by dynamic control valves. Uh, because due to pressure differences during the day, there are peak hours consumption and low hours and medium hours. Uh, these dynamic control valves keep minimum pressure in the critical point of the network. In Israel, the, uh, the critical pressure, the lower pressure that allows this uh, 
2.5 bars, and it's made either by flow regulation or timetable regulation, or even by direct pressure signal from the critical point, but only if the critical point is uh, close to the dynamic control valve location. The fourth uh, arrow is pipeline and assets management. So there are the three R's, repair, renew, and replace. And we start with the repair, which is the cheapest, but also for a short uh, range of time. Uh, to replace, it's very, very expensive for a long time. And the uh, renew, uh, for example, by in internal sleeves or other uh, method, it's in, in between. And the question is, how can we create a reliable decision table to decide what we have to repair, to renew, and to replace? And what are the priorities to do it in our uh, big network? So there is a pipe condition assessment uh, uh, software. It is, a, it is a support software that takes history data and also traces pipes deterioration intensity by acoustic sensors and gives priority recommendation either by table or chart or even in a map. See here this red a uh, red uh, pipe with high priority to be replaced. So probably you remember the fifth arrow that I added, the improvement uh, of accuracy and frequency of uh, measurement. Uh, in about accuracy is very uh, simple. It's recommended to install high quality meters with low uh, threshold of measuring. Uh, because the lower the threshold, it can uh, measure also uh, small consumption inside premises and even leakage uh, inside premises, which are not done by uh, old and uh, old metal with, uh, with that are not accurate. <clears throat> and it's also recommend to maintain or replace the meters periodically in Israel, we replace uh, meters uh, each five or six or seven years. It depends on the type of the meter. Now, about the frequency of measurement, <coughs> there are AM, AMR system, automated meter reading system. We see here this uh, apartment building with the main meter and apparent meters and also meters of the of the industry and each, uh, each six hours they send their readings. Ah, here, uh, inside here, there is an electrical uh, sensor with transmitter that uh, uh, send the readings uh, through relay station to the control center of the, <coughs> of the utility and uh, all the time or um, it's online uh, calculation made here in the center, uh, uh, in the control center about the stream of readings that it accepts. Uh, the main uh, advantage of automated meter reading system that it is enable the utility to get water loss data on a daily basis. Another advantage that here inside this, the, this electrical circuit that there is a magnet detector that if people attach attach magnet uh, to the to the meter in order to stop the revolve of the system here uh, it's reveal the magnet and give a lot to the uh, utility and uh, the stuff can come and uh, catch the thefts and another another uh, another thing is the uh, change of flow direction by consumers for part of the time of the consumption. So it's uh, there is also the detector uh, if there is a flow direction change. Another 
another advantage that it's alert also for leakage inside premises. For example, if there is a continuous um, continuous uh, consumption inside premises for 14, 48 or 72 hours, there is alert and the utility uh, in Israel, uh, at least the utility must call to the consumer and alert for a possible uh, leakage inside the premises. They, they do not have to wait for the end of the, uh, the months. And it's also shortened the billing uh, schedule, just you have to push the bottom of the keyboard and you can send all the, the bills to your consumers. Uh, it's quite expensive uh, technology, but it's uh, worth. In Israel, we start to install AMR systems about 15 or a little bit more years ago. And today, about 40 of the meters in Israel are AMR meters. Now we're approaching the end of, the present, of this presentation and I have to share with you some thoughts about uh, networks. Uh, first, it is about the DMA. Second is about GIS and about control. Uh, you remember what is the uh, uh, DMA, District Metering Area. So the main advantage of uh, uh, cutting or dividing the network into uh, areas, smaller areas, uh, that it is enables to focus on leakage in uh, big net uh, networks only in, uh, to, to focus in uh, each uh, DMA. And it is a precondition to holistic management tools. But on the other side, it's very expensive both to install this uh, or to install to create this division into DMA and to maintain it uh, uh, all the time. And it also reduces the supplier reliability, both in uh, routine supply and especially uh, in fire protection cases. Uh, so, as I uh, explained, it helps to reduce water loss only with other control technology. DMA for the division for itself, it's, uh, it's nothing, it not help. And another thought that uh, division to uh, DMAs is not necessary when we use the satellite technology. About GIS, geographical information system, which is uh, coming today in most of the uh, utilities. Most of the new technologies used in non-revenue water reduction are based on GIS systems, so it is re uh, warmly recommended to build a reliable GIS systems and keep it updated all the time. And about control, what is not measured cannot be controlled. What is not measured cannot be controlled. Uh, before the end, uh, part of the summary from the uh, IWA report that I uh, mentioned in, at the beginning of this presentation, and it's written there that given climate changes and expanding population, full coverage of improved water service is still a large global challenge. And it's also written, and I have mentioned it uh, previously, that non-revenue reduction can provide many benefits like including reduced operation, including uh, reducing operation costs, increased revenues, better water resources efficiency, and expanded water supply at the cost far lower than new water production facilities. So let's sum up this presentation. Uh, we started with a short worldwide review, then we spoke about the water balance. Uh, we mentioned the ways to reduce non-revenue water rates. You remember the four or the five arrows to squeeze the gray uh, 
uh, square. Uh, we spoke about some method for estimating the water losses, like the percentage ILI and the rest the quantity uh, methods. And we spoke about a new technology that helps us to reduce the non revenue water or reduce the water loss. Before the end, uh, since this presentation will be in the YouTube and in, uh, uh, the, in Facebook, uh, who wants to deepen his knowledge and to find some more information, there are links uh, here to some pressure management video, uh, videos and satellite technology. And there are also links to uh, Israeli companies' technologies uh, that supply the technologies that I mentioned in this uh, I mentioned in this uh, uh, presentation. First, you have a link, uh, link to Israel Export Institute, the water sector, and then to active leakage control uh, technologies, so uh, management tools, pressure management, and AMR. So the major message of this presentation that water loss reduction is the cheapest water source to be developed. Again, water loss reduction is the cheapest water source to be developed. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. As I found it very, very professional to begin with. I think that you have explained and demonstrated very clearly the idea of how important it is to reduce loss of water. And I think that we all understand though that on a national level, for example, it can save lots of money because the amount of water that are getting lost in several places, if they were saved, they could save the, the nation, the need of, for example, uh, uh, the desalination plan, which is way more uh, expensive. But regarding the cost of things, I wanted to ask you something before we go to questions of uh, the other participants. We understand the uh, interest of the nation, but as some people already know here, Israeli system is built on cooperation. Each corporation is responsible for, for a certain geographical uh, zone. What is their incentive? Because they are the ones that need to take action in order to reduce loss of uh, water. How is it built in Israel? What is uh, their incentive to do everything necessary and to invest in their own infrastructure in order to, uh, to reduce the loss of uh, water in their system? I think there is uh, no connection uh, or no, uh, nothing between the uh, national network to the urban networks because uh, each urban network is, is it uh, for itself and each utility has its uh, manpower and methods and budget and uh, expert and so on so uh, in this um, in this uh, issue of uh, non-revenue water reduction uh, each utility has to make his uh, utmost in his network, in his area. Of course, there is cooperation of sharing knowledge between uh, corporations and between uh, uh, among utilities all over the country. And uh, what I made here, I tried to share knowledge also for other utilities, but uh, I think it's not concerned to the national network. Okay, thank you. Before I go to other questions, can you get out of the uh, presentation so that we will see you? Uh, uh, how... Do you need press somewhere? somewhere? Okay, yes, yes, I stopped the sharing. Uh -huh. Great. Thank you. So we'll start with a very long uh, question. I don't know if the Israel experience will help answering that but i think it's important to raise the question because it's probably relevant to many other countries patrick murunga from kenya water institute uh, is writing in the wake of covid 19 challenges 
many uh, water utilities have recorded reduced income resulting from inability of many households to pay for water bills for two, three months now. Although NRW results from uh, unbilled water consumption, unpaid bills also affects revenue. How should we handle this emerging non-revenue component? I'm sorry, this led. I didn't understand this long uh, question. Can you repeat it, uh, please? There is, apparently, if I understood correctly, it, there is a problem of COVID-19 because people have less money, they just, they do not pay. Um, and then the revenue is going down. Uh, do we have some experience in situations like that? Uh, what would you suggest? if you have an idea of, of doing in that case. Okay, sorry, I, I have no experience in this and uh, uh, during the, the presentation, I said that we are, uh, uh, we are dealing with non-revenue water, which is the amount of bills that are sent to the consumers. Uh, I understand that question, this question related to the collection uh, process and uh, the depreciation of the collection and it's not a, it is not an engineering uh, question that and I <laughs> don't know uh, okay. the answer to this question. So apparently it's food for thought for everybody um, uh, to think maybe someone can find a solution and share it with us in uh, the coming days. Um, there's a question, another question, but before that, I urge you to, I urge you all to enter the chat and look for Aviv Berkovich's uh, chat line. He shares with us the link to the page at the Export Institute, Israeli Export Institute um, uh, website, where you can find I think most of the Israeli companies, including uh, some uh, new developments and uh, new technologies that are already being used and ready for export. So um, I really suggest that you will uh, uh, check this website uh, as well. Um, there's another question from Marie. With regard to renew and repairs, what would you advise? Plastic pipes or metallic pipes? Uh, of course, there are advantages and disadvantages of any type of, of or let's say, any family of uh, pipes, the steel family and the plastic family. Uh, by the way, uh, about uh, acoustic sensors, that there are acoustic sensors that uh, detect, leak, detect noise or leakage in steel pipes and uh, other type, another type of uh, sensor that detect leakage, uh, leakages in plastic pipes. Okay, so it's uh, different kinds of different types of uh, acoustic sensors. And I think um, you know, there are advantages and disadvantages of any uh, of each uh, family. For example, uh, steel pipes uh, stands for high pressure, uh, but uh, plastic pipes are not uh, uh, eroded. So, uh, you know, it depends on the, it's also on the price and uh, many other parameters. Uh, okay, next is coming from uh, Wilder from Guatemala. Wonderful lecture, God bless you. Can you recommend us some GIS software for design networks for the better control in the water distribution in towns or rural areas? Shalom from Guatemala. Um, I'm not specialist in GIS uh, softwares. There are many uh, softwares, there are uh, many companies, and uh, you have to, to choose your, your choice. Okay. Um, 
we we are out of questions and we're exactly the time now is exactly four o'clock israel so um do you have any uh, last words oh no it sounds it sounds bad uh would you, would you like to say anything else which you think is very very important or should we just invite people for our next week's lecture again and thank them all for staying with us throughout the throughout the lecture and of course inviting you all to keep in touch with Mashab MATC, with Chezi, with myself, we're here for Chezi. Okay, so thank you very much for all my audiences and I hope it helped a little bit to understand this uh, topic of non-revenue water reduction. Thank you all. Great. So thank you again. Thank you all and hope to see you next week. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.